we've now talked a bit about the intuition behind decision trees. And now it's time to at least get a bit of intuition on the, the learning side of things. So, so we'll stay at a very high level right now, and then we'll slowly drill down in, into a bit more of the formalities. Tree learning is fundamentally an incremental greedy algorithm. So, so we, we start with an empty tree, so there's a root node and uh, one leaf, and then we gradually grow this tree by adding uh, one new question and the appropriate leaves uh, one at a time. By greedy, what we mean is that we try to make the best choice uh, for uh, for expanding the tree at each stage. In some cases, we can uh, tell exactly what the best choice is, but in most cases, we have to uh, sat be satisfied with uh, a guess at what that uh, best expansion is. Once the tree is grown, then we recompute the predictions that are made in the leaves, and then we repeat this process until an adequate tree is learned. And by adequate, we mean that it's appropriately capturing uh, the training set and and ultimately probably asking this question with respect to a validation set as well. So let's talk about really the, the generic algorithm in a bit more detail here. So this is fundamentally a supervised learning problem. So our training set is a set of uh, pairs of uh, feature vectors and whatever the correct uh, label is, whether that's a class or some continuous value or we could even imagine a, a continuous vector if, if we wanted to be more complicated. We start by initializing that, that tree as an empty tree with just the root node and the leaf. So what this means is that the decision tree initially is not actually doing any sort of sorting. All of the training set samples fall within that one leaf. And, and so the prediction that we end up making is the one that's going to yield the best performance. Uh, if our tree is a classification tree where, where the predictions are crisp classes, then generally what gets chosen is the majority class uh, across the entire training set. If it's a probability tree, uh, instead, so we're still predicting classes, but a probability distribution over the possible classes, uh, then the prediction ends up uh, reflecting the distribution of the class um, members across that training set. After initialization, then we enter into this loop that continues as long as we don't have an adequate tree. So to drill down into the, the steps, the, the first uh, step is that amongst all of the uh, leaf nodes, we have to make a choice as to which one uh, we're going to replace. And when we do replace it, we're replacing it with a question. And uh, if it's a binary tree, then we're replacing it with a question plus a pair of leaves. Uh, or if it's, an, if it's an n-ary tree, then we're replacing with n leaves. We then have to pick the best question to ask. And so, so we have to answer two things in order to do this. What feature are we going to pay attention to? And which value are we actually going to use as that deciding point or the or threshold that cuts the the two the, the two spaces from one another once the question has been uh, resolved at, at this point then uh, it sorts the at least the subset of the training set elements that fell into the original leaf it now sorts those into the new leaves and we have to compute the best predictions uh, for each of those new leaves how we choose that next best question really varies depending upon the kind of tree that we're working with. In cases where we have uh, a small finite uh, set of uh, features to work with and each of those is a, an enumerated uh, type for which there are a small number of values, then it is actually possible to consider all possible questions when we're evaluating uh, the best one. Uh, more generally, that's the, the set of possibilities is uh, very large, and, and in fact, it can be infinitely large if we're starting to ask questions about continuous variables. Uh, and in this situation, we actually end up sampling from the, the possible question set. Um, so what this means is that the training process that we're using is actually a stochastic one. Uh, so, so the learning algorithm itself is 
adding in uh, some degree of noise uh, to the learning process. And this has uh, important implications as we move forward. Now for probability tree learning, uh, our desired output in our training set is our class label. The leaf nodes are probability distributions over the possible classes. The general idea is that we want to end up with a tree such that each of the leaf nodes contains a pure set of examples. And what I mean by that, if we're dealing with a binary tree, which is classifying positive from negative, we want leaves that contain all positives or all negatives, uh, but we want to minimize the scenario where there are especially equal numbers of positive and positives and negatives. Okay, let's do a, an example in a small feature space. In fact, we'll, we'll take uh, two dimensions since that's easy to draw, uh, and uh, these will be continuous features. So I already have a uh, feature space drawn here with a set of training, uh, training samples. So, so this is x0 by x1. Uh, the positives, the plus signs are one class, the minus signs are the uh, other class, and we want to build a tree that uh, distinguishes the positives from the negatives. Now here, the, of course, the positive and negative symbols, the plus and minus uh, symbols, actually have finite space. I'm assuming that the, the point x0, x1 actually occurs at the middle of uh, each of these symbols. So starting out, what we end up with, so we're going to have a, a, a root node and a leaf node here. Since this is a probability tree, we need to uh, compute uh, a probability distribution as our, uh, as our answer within this leaf node. So to do that, what we're going to do is count up all of the uh, samples uh, in this uh, training set. And in particular, we need to distinguish the positives from the negatives. We have uh, 18 positive samples here and nine negative samples. So what this means is that our probability distribution uh, looks like this. We have, uh, we have 18 over 27. So this is the probability of positive. And the uh, probability of negative, of course, is the complement of that. So we have 9 over uh, 27. So this represents a substantial uh, mixture of uh, positives and negatives within this leaf. So we're really motivated to uh, try to find some questions that can help us make distinctions about uh, uh, positives from, from negatives. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So we can uh, imagine uh, drawing, uh, let's say starting with uh, x1, we could imagine drawing a line, uh, say, along here. And if we, if we were to uh, do that, so what that would look like here is, uh, well, let me, let me draw that over onto the side here. I'm gonna imagine a candidate where we say x1 is greater than or equal to x1 is greater than or equal to 7. And in the yes case and the no case here, uh, in our, within our leaves, so the yes case corresponds to uh, everything that's sitting up here. And so now we have uh, a total of 10 positives and one negative. So then our probability distribution here uh, ends up being 10 over 11 uh, versus uh, 1 over 11. And, and so that's an, a fairly pure leaf. We only have one uh, outlier here. In the other leaf, however, if we count up our positives and our uh, negatives, we have uh, eight positives and we have uh, eight negatives. So that means that uh, we have an equal distribution of the two. And, and that's a bit uh, dissatisfying. If we were to imagine moving this line uh, downwards, so I could, for example, put it right here, 
then what that means actually in the no case, it doesn't actually change that distribution. It's still one half, one half. But in the yes case, we're introducing more uh, negatives uh, into uh, that leaf node. And, and so the left-hand side is actually going to get worse. So, so if we were to actually choose uh, X1 here, then uh, the, this is probably the, the right dividing line. Let's try a, a, a different option here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that. So let's, let's imagine splitting by uh, X0. And I'm going to, uh, we could put a line here, we could put it here. Actually, that's not terribly interesting. We could put it down, uh, down here. Um, actually, probably the best line sits somewhere right about here. Oops, let me shift that over just a little bit. There we go. It, it wants to snap to the, uh, there we go. It wants to snap to the grid. So, so that particular line, let me erase these other lines here. Um, this one is uh, interesting in that, in that it gives us actually a, a fairly uh, good uh, split as well. So let me uh, go ahead and erase, uh, erase this. So I guess the thing to remember is that we originally had 18 positives and nine negatives. So with this uh, particular split, now we're asking is X zero greater than or equal to, it's like 3.8, if this is our origin here. So our yeses are to the right now, and 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 uh, we that gives us uh, four positives, and I think uh, it's uh, eight negatives. So we end up with uh, one third positives, and two thirds negatives, and down the no branch. Uh, we have 14 positives and one negative. So that's 14 over 15 for the positive case and one over 15 for the negative case. And we haven't talked yet very uh, formally about uh, comparing uh, the, the orange here versus the, the purple. But uh, this distinction that we're making down in the no branch is sort of comparable in, uh, in, in purity to the, what we had in the yes branch here. But uh, ev even though this is not a very pure distinction down the yes branch here, it's a better distinction than we had down this no branch here. So it, it turns out this orange branch, and we'll, we'll talk about how to measure this formally, but uh, the, 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 this particular choice uh, in orange uh, turns out to be a better choice. So, so what our decision tree learning algorithm would do is it would, it would build these two trees, compare them uh, to one another, uh, and uh, make this choice uh, of orange. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and purge our purple here. and purge our purple line from there. Okay, so, so given that uh, we have this orange tree, now the question is what's the next uh, best uh, line? And I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in purple. And really we've made the distinctions we need to make on down the no branch here. So we're going to work on the, um, on the yes branch since we have the, the, the lowest purity here. And let me draw in probably the right candidate here. Oops. Trying to draw it very carefully such that the positive falls on above the purple and the negative falls below the, the purple there. Okay, so, so when we 
uh, draw that line there. Um, remember that we have the, the one third, two third here. Um, now what we're doing is we're replacing this leaf node here with yet a new question node. And we're asking whether x1 is uh, greater than or equal to 7.5. And that has a yes branch and a no branch as well. So that yes branch corresponds to what we have up here. And for this, we have four positives and zero negatives. So positives have a one and negatives have a zero. So this is the, the perfect kind of leaf node uh, to have the most pure uh, type of leaf node. What we have down this no branch is that we have uh, one positive and eight negatives. And this too also is uh, a, a really good scenario, scenario to be in. So we have uh, uh, one over nine positives and uh, eight over nine for, for negatives. So it's possible to stop here, uh, but, uh, but we could keep going. And the, the next step, and, and with probability tree learning, uh, the, the next step could be that uh, we're going to find the leaf node that has the highest impurity and uh, go about expanding that. And uh, that particular leaf node is this leaf node right here. And that's happening because of this uh, positive that's sitting right there. So let's go ahead and expand that. So, so we have a variety of possible choices here. Go ahead and do this in red. Uh, this this particular case, the probably the best answer is to split again along the uh, along the x one dimension, and and of course it stops at the orange line on the left hand side, but these dividing lines actually continue to infinity on the right hand side. Okay, so we've taken now this no branch here, and we've expanded that out. So now we're asking x1, is it greater than or equal to, let's say, 5.3. And that has a yes branch and a no branch. Uh, for yes, we have uh, zero positives and five negatives. So again, we have a very nice, pure uh, answer here. So positives have a probability of zero and negatives have a probability of one. Down the no branch, we have one positive and three negatives. So we have one fourth and a three fourths probability here. Okay, so let's go ahead and push this just a little bit further. So, so the question is how, which leaf to uh, actually focus on, and it turns out that this leaf over here is the one that has the highest impurity. So uh, we could make a choice of X0 or uh, X1. I guess it's possible, it could end up drawing a line here, assuming that that one negative that I'm cutting is, is actually falling to the left. We're in really good shape. Visually, the, the more clear one is to actually divide, uh, divide right here. So again, it becomes a question about x1. And we're replacing that uh, leaf node with uh, x1 is greater than or equal to, let's say, 4.8. And that has a yes branch and a no branch. Down the yes side, we have exactly one positive and zero negatives. 
So probability of one for positives and probability zero for negatives. Down the no branch, we have no positives and three negatives. So uh, positive zero probability and negatives uh, probability of one. Okay, so uh, so here we've we've ended up drawing this relatively uh, very small area here, and that is all about just capturing that one uh, training sample. And and hopefully, uh, in your gut, you're starting to feel uh, that a little bit of discomfort in that uh, we've made one specific branch of our tree. Uh, just to address this one particular training uh, sample. So we're going to address this uh, in the, the next uh, video, but I, let's go ahead and sum up what we've done uh, so far. So what we've done uh, is we've engaged in a, a very simple uh, type learning algorithm where we want our leaf nodes to be as pure as possible. We didn't actually drill down completely to resolve all of the uh, impurities, uh, but we did go down one path where we uh, went all the way down to the extreme. Uh, this was a greedy algorithm, and in this particular case, we were picking the one leaf node with the highest impurity, making the choice to expand it, and, uh, and then we had to pick uh, which feature and what the dividing line was for that particular feature that distinguishes between our positive and negative classes. And as we, uh, as we showed, this greedy algorithm can keep going all the way down to the extreme of having only leaf nodes that are pure, even when we end up constructing very tiny uh, regions in our feature space. And, and again, this is the overfitting problem that we've seen in other uh, contexts. So next up, we're going to talk a, little, a bit more formally about how to measure this uh, purity idea.